why should kids worry about going to university? Shouldn't we be looking at it from a different angle? No, I think, should, I think young children should in, in, inspire, aspire to go to university and do great things. And as head of Homerton, I think I can be a beacon that says, come to our college and be the best you can be. I mean, I started, as you know, from a, a council estate in Leicester and uh, did politics and, and travelled the world. And now heading up this college means I want others to be inspired. You don't have to go to university, though, to do well, do you? No, you don't. I mean, I didn't. I mean, I was a car mechanic, sold showers door to door, a ticket tout in, in the West End. But it's one of the routes. It's not the only route. And I just think that, um, I think if people can see it's an option and it's a good option, and it doesn't matter where you're from, that I think you should have that chance. Tell me about your uh, beginnings. I was going to say humble beginnings, but I don't like it that is. phrase. I mean, I remember we spoke in 2019 when I was, when I was knighted. Mm -hmm. And back then I said it was bonkers for a kid from my council estate to be knighted. And, you know, since then, being ennobled, and now master of, uh, of Homerton, even more crazier. But what it means is, it means, is, you know, if you work hard, if you find, find your, yourself and your spirit and your creativity, great things can happen. But are you the exception that proves the rule? I think so. And this is what I want to change. I want more pathways for people like me, black and white, from council estates, to have those pathways to success, pathways to do great things in business in colleges, right across the board. We've got to open the pathways for them to be brilliant. But those kids have got to want, want it, perhaps even yeah. more than kids from privileged backgrounds. They do. I mean, I was hungry, hungry for success, hungry to do things, and kept seeing barriers, barriers all the time. Mm. It's in everyone's... What did in... you do about them? Well, I, I bashed through them, climbed over. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think you have, to be, you have to be tenacious. But we need to take away those barriers, Kay. It's in everyone's interest. You know, I, when I joined the House of Lords, I said in my maiden speech, I think there's talent resides in every street, in every city, in every corner of the country. You know, it's our job as parliamentarians to open up those channels, open the pathways. And it's not that I win and, and you lose. I win and we all win. You know, there's, there's so much talent. And but I want to say to... How do we to... open up those pathways, my lord? What do we do? Well, I mean, there's still... Gross inequalities, uh, race inequalities, gender inequalities. You know, I think the biggest challenge to these inequalities is denial of them. We, we've got to be big, we've got to be bold and say, look, these are systemic problems. Let's be honest. Let's tear them down. Let's um, create pathways and inspire, inspire young men and women on council estates to be in your job, to be in my job. And I think we all benefit from it. Well, I try and do my best. We, I don't know if you saw, we were in Wigan last week and we were talking to youngsters in, in primary schools there. Right. It was really interesting to hear what some of them had to say. But um, what, what's your advice to perhaps kids who are watching this morning ahead of going to school? They sh well, hopefully they can, their parents can buy my book that, yeah. is, that, is, that, is, that is on sale from council house to house of lords. And, and if you're in a council estate and you feel that there isn't a, there isn't a big goal, I'm living proof that working hard and being tenacious and believing in yourself that you can do great things, then it's my job as a, as a head of Homerton and a parliamentarian to tear down the barriers, give you the opportunities, and then you run. And should it be weighted university placing in, in places like Homerton so that kids mm. from underprivileged backgrounds have got more of a chance? Well, we need to widen participation. We need to recognise that a young kid from maybe a disadvantaged background, has to work harder to get good grades. We need to recognise that and see the creativity, see the potential. And then when they come to places like Homerton, that we have wraparound support so they don't feel an imposter syndrome, uh, a sense of unbelonging. I tell all my students, they belong. They need to own it. They need to run with it. And I think that, you know, when, when you do that, you see them glow. You see all the students black and white, mm. we've got a black head. He's telling me to own the space, to be brilliant. And, and I say to them, it's not just about academic success. Yes, I want you to be academically brilliant, but I want you to be a, a good citizen to do extraordinary things. And this is the message we keep, we keep pumping at Homerton. What would you have done differently if you could have your time again? 
Yeah, well, I do it quicker, I think. <laughs> I think. Um, but, you know, OK. Not always possible, is it? It's not always possible. I mean, when you interviewed me before, I said to you that I feel blessed, you know? I, I was fostered, adopted. I had two mothers, one black, one white. Both loved me. Um, and I took my opportunities. And I want to say to a world out there that I hope you can, and I want to make it happen, because I think we're a better society for it. Mm. Um, and often I'm asked, um, you know, I came from a council estate as well, yeah. and often I'm asked about, you know, uh, what advice I would give to people. And, and I often say, don't, don't carry the weight of what you're under, you being under privilege as a child right. on your shoulder. You know, it, it's done, it's gone. Sure, I, I, I agree with you. I mean, I often say that it's not where you start, but, but it's where you go, and even more importantly, how you go. Mm. You know, integrity, uh, morality, your values, taking people with you. Mm. I mean, you inspire. You know, by being here, council house, young girls will say, I want to be like Kay. Mm. I want to be in the hot seat. And they see me at Homerton, and I say the same, I say the same thing. Um, yeah, lots of the kids, actually, who, at the school, <laughs> I, I said, do you want to do my job? No. One of them wanted to be a carer. Oh. which was fantastic. Right. A lot of the guys wanted to do... The younger guys wanted to do science, but not much from the girls on that. OK. No, I think we've got to reach out with STEM learning and the sciences. And, you know, we need Formula One female engineers in the paddock. We've got to say this is a job for you. Lewis wants you too. Yeah. And I think if we keep saying that and showing that, showing the, the roots, the, the pathways to it, I think we've got half a chance. But, you know, we've got to be vigilant. Because every time we think, OK, it's done, things are easier, and then you see, you see us often retreat into our old ways with privilege, with race inequality, with gender inequality. The, the biggest challenge towards these uh, inequalities is denial of them. And I thought after Black Lives Matter, for example, I thought society was ready for some of the biggest, perhaps most uncomfortable conversations, Kay, we've ever had. And many did. I know Sky did. Mm. I was on some of those calls. I think Sky's better for it, actually. But then some retreated. I think some in government retreated into the old ways, saying it's not as bad as you think it is. And then you can't, you can't deal with it. If... So you think the gains from Black Lives Matter yeah. are now receding? I do. I do. I think some have entrenched in denial. Worse still, I think some are saying, you know, those footballers that are taking the knee, is to the detriment of the white working class. Nothing could be further than the truth. That because we're dealing with racism, we can also deal with class poverty, uh, with white working class inequality. It's, as I said, it's not I win, you lose. Let, let's be honest, let's be bold. Um, let's give aspiration to that generation that feel alienated. And um, I just think in every walk of life, that, that we, can, we can make things so much better. The, the starting point is honesty and then drive uh, and then a plan to deliver. You talked about um, your maiden speech in the House of Lords, my lord. Yeah. Um, did, you, did you have imposter syndrome when you first went to the oh, House I of did. Lords? Oh, I did. Mean, I mean, you know, it's like a gilded, a gilded chamber. <laughs> it's gold, gold everywhere, lots of uh, elderly white men. Now, now I'm on that trajectory. But I thought to myself, do I belong? To, to be fair to the Lords, they were very gracious. Many of them said, you know, can I help? And, uh, you know, it takes years to understand uh, all of this. Although I will say that a couple of times I was in the library and I got a tap on the shoulder from a, a fellow peer asking me to do the photocopying. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100%. Actually, three times. So there's, no, you know, yeah, that's it's, it's all ridiculous. Good. It's, it's all good. I mean, did, what did you say? Well, the first time I did it, can you believe it? I got up and did it. Why did you? I know, I know. I defaulted to, OK, all right, all right. Is that because you were embarrassed for a them? Little bit, a, a little bit. The second time I said, I'm one of you. I'm a peer. I showed him my badge and he apologised. So, you know, sometimes change is not as quick as we'd like. And sometimes you point the finger. Uh, other times you let it slide. But we want these institutions to dramatically f uh, change and give people like me a sense of belonging. Now, uh, now you can see me, some of the videos uh, on there, I'm pointing the finger, um, you know, I own the space when I'm there because I feel I have a job to do. You know, I 
share the lived experience of many black and brown people in this country. And I think it's my role to, to talk about that in the chamber. Absolutely. Fascinating to hear from you. Thank it's you always Kate. good to talk to you. Thank you, you very too. much.